Rich has a mouse right there. Dakota, mouse right there. Hey, hey. Mouse. Hey guys, Rich with Rich Rebuilds here, and a couple months ago, I released a video called The Truth Behind EV Conversions, where I listed out how much it would cost if you reached out to a company to get your car converted from gas to electricity. Well, the comment section was ripe with one of my favorite things ever, grown men and women crying like children. One of my favorite things in the world is reading a crying comment section. It's almost like collecting the last infinity stone. Well, the main concern in the comment section is that the prices I listed were too expensive, and you can get a cheap forklift motor out of a trash can and a used car battery for 50 bucks and have a nice homemade EV conversion. Well, I guess I'll just take your word for it. Today I'm going to show you how I'm building my budget EV conversion using recycled parts. Now in that same video I did on conversions, I bought a 1930s Ford Model A rat rod with a Chevy 305 engine. I removed the measly 305, the gas tank, fuel lines, and all the things I wasn't going to need in preparation for an EV conversion. I was gearing up to do a Tesla swap, but that's not really a budget build, is it? No, not everyone's a trust fund baby where a Tesla motor is five to seven grand by itself, plus all the other things you'd need to make it spin would make this far from cheap. And that's what I'm really trying to display here. So the rat rod sat until I came up with a better option. Well, months later while browsing IAA and reliving my motorcycle days, I came across a wrecked motorcycle from a brand I've never heard of called Zero. They make electric bikes. An electric bike? To me, this seemed like the coolest thing ever, so I impulsively bit on it, won it, got it home, and said, now what? The bike's here in person, and well, when I got it home, it settled in that one, I don't have the time to ride, really. Two, it had frame damage. And three, coming from riding modern gas-powered sport bikes, in comparison, the zero, it's like a four on the one to 10 hot scale. I lost motivation to spend hours fixing a bike I wasn't really into, and when it's all said and done, I could only ride about 30 minutes with my sport bike friends before I had to turn around and go home and maybe cry a little bit. But besides looks, let's look at the great technology behind these bikes. Now a Zero motorcycle is hands down one of the best bang for the bucks EV conversions you can get in a small package. I was able to get the Zero for 3,200. You get the motor, batteries, controller, DC to DC converter, gauges, all wiring, contactors. You get logging, Bluetooth connectivity, and a charger for 3,200. You can't beat that. Even if you were to source the parts individually used out of a trash can for a cheap budget EV conversion, I bet in terms of bang for the buck, you couldn't come close. I've tried for about a fraction of my life now. Now this got me thinking, the motor's pretty powerful, it's all apart, I have a rat rod just sitting here that doesn't weigh anything, why not dump the zero components into the rat rod? Well, why the hell not? And to tell you the truth, it may not be as powerful as the Chevy 305 at replace, which is hilarious to even say out loud, but it's not as heavy and the instant torque may make up for it. So today, we're going to start this series of the conversion. In this episode, we're going to make two things. One called an adapter plate, and two something called a coupler. Now the adapter plate is what allows the electric motor to mount to the transmission itself, and the coupler is what allows the motor shaft to connect to the transmission. Because if you look at the two, you got to think to yourself, how the hell is this going to work? The inputs of the two are completely different, and we need a way for them to connect. But wait Rich, aren't you going to have a clutch? The answer is no for a few reasons. One is weight. The electric motor, even though it was designed for a bike, I'm not sure how it's going to do moving an actual car. So the less weight, the better. It doesn't have a whole lot to give, and if it's turning a heavy clutch and a flywheel, that's power being used as spinning a wheel and not moving the car. Yes, it could get a lightweight flywheel and clutch, but that's not an option because that adds to the cost. Remember, it's a rat rod I'm building in my basement. And lastly, the motor is an electric motor, and since it makes torque instantly, I'd likely only be driving in one gear anyways, and I wouldn't have to shift nearly as often if I were in an engine powered by gas. But I will say, it's a lot easier shifting with the clutch. Rat rods are pretty much meant to be ratty and a little bit more difficult to live with on a daily basis. Plus, if I want to feel that feeling of shifting with the clutch, I'll just drive my Z06. So today we're going to make a said coupler. The electric motor has a smooth shaft with a keyway and the transmission is splined. Now my welding skills suck at best and I can't find my kitchen knife, so to make the coupler, I'm going to go to Lead Advanced Technologies in Gloucester. I'm going to have him remove the spline from the clutch and weld it to the actual sprocket of the bike. Now I took some measurements and it looks like even when I put the motor on the shaft of the transmission, I'll have to extend it out a bit. So not only will I have to mate the two parts together, but I'll also need to add a one inch extension as well. Let's see what Lee can come up with. Well done. Huh. 
coming apart. There's one. Nice. Two. Two. Three. Ah, ah, ah. Sounds like four. Da, 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 five. Yay! Have some spoons. That might be just warm, but not hot. Oh, it is warm. Yeah. Just like last time. Remember the last one? Don't touch it! <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Yeah, that bit's cooked, but you know what? Okay, Sunday. Oh, right now, everyone's cringing. Yep. This is NASA approved. <laughs> it looks like you really can Right. Do it. That's all that we had sitting around. Let's do that. In here. Let's do it. Make yeah, it work. Yeah, I don't know. Whoop, this one? Dakota, oh, sorry. Dakota oh, my bad. Oh, hey, sorry. Doggo. Sorry, doggo. That's some, that's some that's, serious girl. This girth, is a hamster dude. shooter. <laughs> Where would you shoot the hamster? I don't understand. Uh, well, we'll have to demonstrate later on for you. <laughs> right. Oh, look. Cleaning up the furs before we put it in there. Mm -hmm. It's still a little warm side here. <laughs> if you were a Disney princess, what princess would you be? <sighs> Ariel. Why Ariel? Because she's the I, hottest one. I remember when I was younger, I used to... You're just all for the redhead right now? I used to pleasure myself to it, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, you like that all of the chips all over you? Yeah. It's one of our pants. Ooh, I like that one. Nice pop. All right, now we're fully trued up. Other side. So we have an option. One, I could come here. Yep. Cut this, the inner, the ID down to fit this lip perfect, to have it fully centered perfect. Mm -hmm. Or I put this hub back in and we cut this outer ID where my thumbnail is right. to have that fit. And it's either one. Will that fit over it, or just barely? Barely, it's right there. I don't know if I can get it out. Like it's that tight, and I just push it in my hand. Damn, there you go. Damn. That lives there now. Bye-bye. So that Craftsman? 18 Craftsman? Craftsman? Yeah. I mean, it. there is no play. Like I'm pushing pretty damn hard. You need a set screw? Put a set screw in, make sure it's not moving. This is like his heel. Look at that. Last it's magic. Video, last video over here. Oh, I like his feet. Dude, one of your calves is smaller than the other. Look at that. Oh, no, no. No. No, the same. Yeah. Ooh, I like that pose. That. No, 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 like do that. that again. Do that again. Oh, I mean, shit. Hey. Show hey, us something. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the spacer. Mm -hmm. 
Now we put it in the lathe, we spin it, lock it in, make everything as though it's true, perfect in line. Yep. And then we get the welder out on the lathe and tack weld it, just tack it. The are, shorts are those on. your welding shorts, Lee? Oh, I yeah. have. Two sec. It dries within 30 seconds. Okay. Okay, you got a good video of it. All yeah. right, good. And next shot would be spray cleaner. Clean it up. Get it all over everything. Make sure you get on the wood. Oh. Wood, 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 wood. How fast can you say wood? Wood, 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 Dakota, mouse, oh, right oh. there. Hey, hey. Mouse. Oh, shit. Yeah. But yeah, I need to redo that. I need to grind it down. That well there where my thumb is. Yeah. That's fine. Like good penetration. Oh, the base sound here needs to be done yeah, a little bit. That right there where my index right there. Yeah. Yeah. Something got in there and contaminated. Okay, great. So Lee made one hell of a badass coupling. I'm going to have to look into getting a lathe now and adding that to my 3,212 point wish list. In the next episode, I'll be doing some more cutting, grinding, welding, and jumping on the rat rod. But let's get the second very important thing out of the way, a mounting plate. Now the mounting plate is what connects the actual motor housing to the transmission bell housing. In order to get a piece of steel large enough, I have to go to a machine shop. I'm going to head to a little further north to see AJ at PMS Manufacturing. I've never been in an actual machine shop for more than five minutes before being asked to leave, so this is a pretty cool experience for me. Let's see what the machines at PMS Manufacturing can do. Yeah. The little, the little glass piece, it comes down here. Oh, I see. And that's the little, that's the protective piece. So if anything gets splashed back through the nozzle, gotcha. this will contaminate before it reaches the muddy piece. Gotcha, that's cool. This is a serious laser you guys got here. Can I buy one of these used? Is it a lot less? <laughs> I'm sure it is a lot less. <laughs> Alright, yeah. this is all cut by down by the laser. Oh, laser, that's cool. Look at all these scrap pieces right there. Look at them. Oh, yeah. They all drained that. <laughs> That's like, I, that was just clean this morning. Really? Alright, so they'll clear the life barrier. We'll send this table in and we should be able to cut it. Otherwise, it won't. gonna burn in my hand though? No. Like this, this, this makes it nice and safe for you to look in there. Gotcha. Just goes over and does a calibration. Take your word for it. Keep the laser cool, liquid oxygen. <laughs> Might still be a little. Might be warm, Rick. Ah! <laughs> AJ took a scrap piece of metal, cut a perfect square in it, and then cut a four inch hole so that the coupling can come through. Now I asked for a quarter inch thick steel, and that was an instant mistake because in the next episode, you're gonna see how difficult that is to work with. 
Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe for next week's installment, where I really start getting down and dirty. And for updates on the car and other things that you're probably not going to be interested in, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, at RichieBKid. I will see you all soon.